That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. But Joe Biden apparently says that he is now the ultimate authority on who is black and who isn't. And so this clip comes in two parts. We're going to play the first part and then we'll give the follow up by the host Charlemagne, which, by the way, I just want to point out, first of all, I'm not going to call him Charlemagne the God because he's not God. I don't care what he thinks of himself. He's not God. I don't call him God for the same reason I don't call people reverend. The only time that's ever used in the Bible is in reference to God, and a person is not God. So that's a non-starter. I'm just going to call him Charlemagne, which is also hilarious because, of course, Charlemagne being named after an emperor that persecuted Jews. So I'm not really sure why he went with Charlemagne as his moniker. Maybe it's his real name. I don't know. But either way, so this is an interview with Joe Biden with a predominantly a, a podcast that has a very predominantly black audience. Uh, with a guy named Charlemagne interviewing him. You can go ahead and watch. Well, I saw the day that a news report broke that uh, Amy Klobuchar was being vetted, and a lot of people on social media, they're not too happy about that. And um, it's because they want your running mate to be a black woman. I don't know if you saw the op-ed in the Washington Post by some of the leading black women voices in this country, and they feel since black women are such a loyal voting block, and black people saved your political life in the primaries this year. They have things they want from you, and one of them is a black woman running mate. What, what do you say to them? What I say to them is that I'm not acknowledging anybody who is being considered, but I guarantee you there are multiple black women being considered. So first of all, from that clip, one thing that you've got to point out is the entitlement from this guy, Charlemagne. I mean, that entitlement is a foot thick. It is palatable in the air. You, you can taste it. Listen to his rationale for why Joe Biden should pick a black woman as his running mate. He's saying that black women basically deserve this because they are such a loyal voting bloc. Now, we're going to get into why that rationale is stupid in a second, but even if you were using his own internal logic, that's still stupid. Here's why. Because if you're looking at the numbers, in the last election with Hillary Clinton, if, we're, if this were just about votes and just getting votes, and because you should go with whatever voting bloc has the, the most loyal base, well, 35.7 million white people voted for Hillary Clinton in 2016, 14.7 million black people did. So less than half. Now, granted, a far larger percentage of black people than white people voted for Hillary Clinton, and that's to be expected. It was, uh, according to these numbers, they had uh, only 89%. Uh, they had 89% of black people voting for Hillary Clinton, so definitely a larger chunk of black people than white people voting Democrat. But if you were just going by the numbers and this was just strictly an appeal to whichever is the most loyal voting bloc, well, then, by all means, Vice President Biden should pick a white person. There are more than double the amount of white people that voted Democrat in the presidential election in the last go-round than voted for, you know, than voted, uh, than black people voted for. So, uh, I mean, if that's the case, then going by Charlemagne's own logic, then the vice president should be a white person. But that's incredibly stupid because, of course, you shouldn't pick a person based on the color of their skin. I thought that that's what we were all, you know, moving towards is that we all wanted there to be equality and you got a job or you were considered for something not based on the color of your skin or your whatever's in your pants. You were chosen based on whether or not you would do the best job or not. I thought that that's what, for the longest time, I realize that this isn't a mantra of the Democrat Party now, but for the longest time, especially back in the days of Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Union, they were saying, no, no, treat us all equally. Judge a person based on the content of their character, not based on the color of their skin. This guy's saying the opposite. Please choose people based on the color of their skin. Be a racist. Specifically pick out a black woman. He's asking the, the presidential candidate, please be a racist and a sexist when you're considering who, who did you. It's really a heck of a thing. Sane people do not think that way. Sane, rational people do not think, well, black women vote, a large percentage of them vote for Democrats, so he owes us this. Well, first of all, you're not even close to the biggest voting bloc, but even if you were, that's still dumb. You should pick the person that will be best for the country, 
that will do the best job as the vice president, not because of the color of their skin or because of whether or not they are a man or a woman. That's not something that should be the case. So anyway, here's the second part of this same, and this is right after that first clip concludes. Well, you know, Thanks so the, much. That's really our time. I apologize. You can't do that to black media. You I can't do that to white media and black media because my wife has to go on at six o'clock. Okay. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. Cause it's I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Man, there's a lot to unpack in that clip, but a couple things, first of all, like I said after the first clip, and it was obvious even then, the entitlement mentality is so thick in the air during this interview. You can't do that to black media. First of all, black media? Why is there a black media and a white media? And I do think it's funny that Joe Biden basically says, I do that to black media, I do that to white media. What is white media? Like, when I watch on CNN, Jake Tapper, is that white media because the guy happens to be a white guy? I assume that there are black people that also watch Jake Tapper, even though the audience is predominantly black for The Breakfast Club, the program that he's on right now, I would assume there are at least some non-black people watching. It's such a ridiculous thing. Like, you can't do that to black media. Again, this is Charlemagne asking presidential candidate Biden to be a racist. He's saying, I know you, because you heard his producer there say, I'm sorry, we're out of time. We got to go to something else. He's saying, you can't do that to black media. So what he is doing is saying, whatever other media that you're doing, ignore them because they're not black media and pay attention to me. Give me extra time because I'm black. In other words, he is asking for a special favor specifically because the color of his skin happens to be darker than the person that he is presumably going on with next. I'm not sure who would that, that would be at 6 o'clock. He's saying something about his wife has an interview then, but regardless, think about what that means. He is asking for black privilege. He's saying the color of my skin merits that you spend more time with me that you not leave this interview until I feel like this interview has been concluded because I'm a black guy. That's insane. It's hilarious to me that the same people that would, I'm sure, accuse somebody like me, who has a far smaller audience than him, by the way, of white privilege, saying, no, no, I, I can, by the color of my skin, pigeonhole you and, and, you know, try to guilt you into staying on because I'm a black guy. I mean, the entitlement mentality, it really is just so insane. And that was a perfect example of it. But... The second part of that, of course, is what Joe Biden, the vice, the presidential candidate, had to say. Joe Biden made the mistake of saying the quiet thing out loud. And this is a mistake that politicians make on a regular basis, it seems like, in our recent political climate. A great example is President Trump. He has a habit of saying the quiet thing out loud. For example, when he said, look, we're not going to be too harsh on the Saudis because we need their oil. Okay, well, that may be true, but politically, you're not supposed to say that. R Republicans would all agree with that more or less, but that's not something you're supposed to say out loud because of how bad it plays in the, the political landscape. And, and, you know, that's one of the things that people find refreshing about Trump is that he's honest about those things. The Democrat majority whip recently said essentially uh, a similar thing where he accidentally said the quiet thing out loud, where he said that, hey, this coronavirus, that's a perfect opportunity for us to get a whole bunch of the stuff that we want done, done. Which went exactly along with what conservatives were saying about this thing the whole time. Isn't it amazing that all of their solutions to coronavirus are all of the policies that they've been pushing for the last 20 years? Somehow it just happened to just line up that all the solutions to coronavirus happen to be things like a universal basic income and universal government-funded health care <laughs> and so on and so forth. Isn't that amazing how all your solutions to this problem uh, are all the same solutions that you've been talking about your entire career? So that was just basically a revealing of what all the Democrats were thinking. This is a great opportunity for us to go ahead and get things through. This is Joe Biden saying exactly the same thing. Joe Biden's mistake is that he said a truism that people in the Democrat Party have believed 
that black votes basically belong to them. That they don't even have to worry about currying black people's votes because, you know, black people are going to vote for us anyway. Because if the alternative is us or a Republican, they're going to vote for us every single time. We don't have to cater to them. I mean, heck, somebody that I have very little political... Uh, I have very little in common with them politically is the best way to say this. A guy from our own state, Charles Barkley. I mean, Auburn guy, somebody that I really like as an athlete, don't agree with him much on politics, even though his antics on uh, his sports commentary are hilarious. He said a while back, he said, look, Democrats only care about black people when it comes time to vote, and they pretty much ignore us for the four years in between each of those times. And he's right. And the reason that that happens, the reason that that happens is ultimately because they know where your vote is going. They don't feel like they have to earn your vote because they know when election day comes, you'll show up like the good little voters that you are because they feel like they own you. And I know that that was wildly offensive. I meant it to be. And here's the thing that people really need to understand that the same people and a lot of them black people that have spoken about this. I know I saw uh, Donna Brazil speaking about it. I've, I've seen other people uh, through the media, you know, talking about how, well, Joe Biden should have apologized, but then they'll explain it away. Those same black people that are saying that, that was inappropriate for Joe Biden to say have been both implicitly and in some cases explicitly saying exactly the same thing for a really, really long time. Been saying essentially that, well, you're not really black if you would consider voting for a Republican. You're not really black if you hold conservative values. People that have called people like Justice Clarence Thomas and Uncle Tom say horrible things about guys like Ben Carson and Alan West and Candace Owens and David Webb. They basically say, well, well you're really just a white person if you don't vote Democrat, that part of having a black identity is voting for Democrats, which is hilarious when you consider that that was actually the opposite was true as recently as the 1960s. I know that a lot of the people that are watching that are looking at that and saying, Caleb, it's wildly offensive that you're saying that Democrats basically think that they own black people's votes. Good. It was intended to be offensive. Because that's what they think about you. And this is not something that is exclusive to the Democrats. It's not. It is exclusive to the Democrats on the, the idea of black people being this way. But Republicans are just as bad. They do exactly the same thing. And one of the primary groups that they do that with is the group that I'm in. White evangelicals. When it comes to white evangelicals, they know that come election day, the vast majority of us, probably in an even larger percentage than the black community. I mean, the ratio for Hillary Clinton to, to Donald Trump in the last election was, as I was saying earlier, 89% of black people voted for Hillary Clinton. I'm guessing for white evangelicals, it was like 98 voted for Republican. That's a reliable voting block. Does Republicans know they don't have to do anything to win that vote? They don't have to do anything to reach out to that community? That's in the bag. I don't have to spend time campaigning for or doing things that would please that specific demographic. And so this is not something that I'm saying it only applies to black people. This applies to us too. Because when it comes to politics, when it comes to voting, your vote only matters when people don't know where it's going. Your vote is only going to change something when it's not owned by one particular person or party by default. To give a great example of this, this is a quote from Donald Trump in Cedar Rapids back in 2016 at one of his rallies in Iowa. He said, and I quote, If you like Donald Trump, that's great. Judges, Supreme Court judges have no choice. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You have no choice. So, Donald Trump, you'll have to vote for me anyway because of the Supreme Court justices. Doesn't matter whether you like me or not. I don't have to worry about your vote. 
you're going to show up anyway. Now, this, you know, you have to read between the lines a little bit more than what Joe Biden said, but it's the truth. Republicans and people on the right, they know that dutifully, like clockwork, every single election time, when election time comes around, when it is time to vote, the white evangelical Christian is going to vote for the Republican. They don't have to do anything to earn our vote. And Democrats know exactly the same thing is true with the black community, and that's why neither side serves that community very well. Because they know they don't have to worry about losing your vote. And so I say this to Christians of all stripes, all races. If you want to have an actual influence over your politicians, if you want to actually make a change, the best way to do that, the absolute best way to do that, is to let them know that they have to earn your vote. That you're not just going to vote for them by default. That they actually have to pass policies and have a record showing that they are going to do the things that you yourself would do if you were in office. Unfortunately, where we are now, we get the state of politics that we deserve. Black people get the Democrats that they deserve. White evangelicals get the Republicans that they deserve. And both of us are disgruntled and think that nobody listens to us specifically because they don't. That's not just an imaginary sense. They're really not listening to us. And I just explained to you why. Joe Biden, in not so many words, just explained to you why on the Democrat side, I just read a quote from you from Donald Trump explaining why they don't pay attention to you on the Republican side. That's why. If you want to have an influence, your vote has to be earned. You can't just give it to somebody because they have a D or an R behind their name. I got so frustrated. And I know I'm venting a little bit here. But I got so frustrated with people on the right back in the 2016 election. And remember, I wound up not voting for President Trump. Telling me that, no, 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 I have to vote for Donald Trump or else I'm not really a Christian. That's exactly the same sentiment that was reflected in Joe Biden telling him, you know, you're not actually a black person if you vote this way. It's the same thing, just in a different form. And we get the state of politics we deserve because we've continued to play this game because we've continued to not make politicians earn our vote. This is what we got. My mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, then you're probably talking about a leftist. Nah, I kid. But seriously, it would really help me out if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. I'm sure my mom would appreciate it.